you're watching TV 47 Weekend Edition. Let's continue with our coverage. Now, Metropolitan Circle has been in the headlines for the past few years due to the loss of billions occasioned by alleged fraudulent de dealings. Now, former top management officials are under scrutiny and some in the docket, in the dock rather. Tonight, TV 47's Moiga William delves beyond the financial loss of over 10 billion shillings further uncovering the untold suffering of its members. These members are left with only the hope that soon, if not later, they will eventually receive a refund of their lifetime savings deposited in what was once a stable and promising financial institution. And with the push coming to show, an interim committee selected by SASRA will manage Metropolitan Circle for the next three years with an aim to stabilize the circle and recover lost members' deposits. Kanunga at the heart of the expansive Kiambu County. It is already midday. At the home of a 68-year-old retiree, she's busy in the kitchen making porridge, the only meal she can afford to offer her visitors. The former kindergarten teacher in the smoky and not well-lit kitchen is done making the fermented maize flour porridge and the meal for the day is served. Despite working for 30 years to secure comfortable retirement, she now leads a hand-to-mouth life. And for today, her guest will have to be grateful to have been served this cup of porridge. The mother of six blames her current misfortune on a financial institution, Metropolitan National Circle. She agrees to an interview, but insists on concealing her identity. <laughs> The people who have our money are not our friends but enemies. If they get wind that I am coming for my money, they can plan to harm me. Since her retirement in 2016, the former educator now turned farmer depends on small-scale farming for survival. Despite securing her future in her prime, she now lives as a pauper, unable to access the hundreds of thousands of shillings she saved in the circle. It is eight years since my retirement. My money is still there. 2016 is the last time the circle paid in full amount of our dividends. Every year we are called in for meetings. What we keep telling the management is we want a refund of our money. How did this former county council employee find herself in such a predicament? She admits that the SACO was one of the best financial institutions in the 90s, attracting a huge number of civil servants, especially from the education sector. It is in 2016 that a dark cloud started forming on the roof of the institution and trouble began. It was during this year when she last received her full dividend paid out at 12% of her savings. And since then, the Metropolitan National Circle has never been the same. 2018, 2019 up to date, we have not received any amount of our money. Her claims are supported by Agustino Ching, the head teacher Kiambu Hill Crest Academy. Teaching is a passion. The way you interact... O Ching, a member of the Circle since 2011, says that financial help from Metropolitan Circle enabled him to complete his bachelor's degree at the University of Nairobi. 20, 2018, that is when we started seeing some hitches. I started experiencing some hitches with the circle because I found out that at that point, you find that there was a problem with the cash flow within the, the circle. So at that point, you go there and then you cannot be in a position to get given amount of money. And then you are given some reasons that seemed not to be pleasing. However, the circle situation worsened over the years. If you applied for a loan of 500,000 shillings, you can't get the whole amount. It will be issued in installments. For example, you have 20,000 within your account. Then you cannot be in a position be given the whole amount of 20,000 that you required. You are given 5,000 only, and that 5,000 also, also getting was a bit problematic. Manager, 
Anytime I visited the branch to get my money, the manager would call me in and he would issue me with 20,000 or 30,000 shillings. It is crucial to note these words, as they are key to uncovering how unscrupulous individuals siphon money from the SACO. Data from the SACO Society's regulatory authority, SASRA, reveals a substantial decline in the total assets of Metropolitan SACO, dropping from 10.02 billion shillings in 2022 to 1.07 billion shillings in 2023. The sharp decrease is partially attributed to members abandoning the SACO. An audit report further uncovered a loss of 12 billion shillings. Just what happened to the once driving savings and credit cooperative? The story of Metropolitan Sacco reads like fiction, only that the characters involved are real people. In the second installment of this investigative piece, we reveal the other characters, who are like Augustine and others who prefer to remain anonymous, could be smiling all the way to the bank after collapsing another bank. Metropolitan Sacco has been making headlines in recent years due to the loss of billions, allegedly linked to fraudulent dealings. Now I am old and about to retire. As for my money, I don't know how safe it is. Former top management officials of the Sacco are now under intense scrutiny with some facing charges in court. Those who stole from the Sacco are well known. TV 47 has uncovered details through a former employee who requested anonymity for fear of his safety, revealing how billions were allegedly embezzled by former top executives. The siphoning is said to have begun as far back as 2010, raising serious questions about the governance and oversight within the SACO during that period. The University of Nairobi Finance graduate alleges that the SACO's financial embezzlement began when Metropolitan SACO hired two consultants to run a new member recruitment campaign. During this period, the SACO also introduced a new loan product called the Premier Loan Product aimed at attracting more members. This move is suspected to have laid the groundwork for the misappropriation of funds as irregularities in the disbursement of the loans emerged suggesting that the product was being used as a cover for fraudulent activities by the former top management officials. So there were some account opening forms that were dubious, that were erroneous, that were somehow fraudulent from the word go. The former clerk at the circle reveals that even erroneously registered members, who he alleges were not real persons, were offered the loan product. He estimates that nearly 4 billion shillings were lost before the premium loan product was halted in 2017 due to legal issues. Between 2012 and 2019, the former clerk further alleges that certain accounts, particularly those belonging to top managers, were able to perform successful transactions despite having insufficient balance. This was reportedly facilitated by individuals in the IT department. It is alleged that when the overdraft on an account reached millions of shillings, the debt will be written off and the transaction history erased, effectively making the money disappear without a trace. Overdrawing of accounts was done at the branch level, whereby a cashier will, will be commanded, give me 250,000 Kenyan shillings. This money, uh, they could post now the debit and the credit. You know, you have to debit this and credit this. Now they debit your account, okay? But now the crediting part isn't there. So now you take the cash, but in your account you'll see minus maybe two, the 100,000. Then they do that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, the other day, the other day, the other day, the other day, the other day. Remember the claims by the two circle members who when they wanted to withdraw money, they will receive it in batches instead of the full amount requested? According to this former employee, who left the institution in 2021, in the period between 2015 and 2017, officials became even more crafty. When money was remitted to the SACO's account, instead of being allocated to loans and refunds, some of the funds were diverted to several staff accounts. The money would then be withdrawn in cash and allegedly delivered to the account's office creating a complex web of fraudulent transactions designed 
to siphon off large sums without detection. The ATMs used to work only during salary uh, disbursement. Uh, the turmoil surrounding Metropolitan Sacco is not an isolated incident. Despite the Sacco supervision's report of 2023 by the Sacco Society's regulatory authority, SASRA, showcasing a thriving sector with over a trillion shillings in savings and membership growth to 6.84 million across 357 regulated SACOs, the number of complaints has surged. In 2023 alone, complaints rose to 715, indicating a growing discontent among members. In a bid to address these challenges, Cabinet Secretary for Cooperatives Weekly for Paranya has announced plans to strengthen SACO's regulatory framework through a cooperatives bill and amendments to existing legislation. And it's unfortunate that that SACO has lost billions. It's unfortunate they lost. And that's why we are coming up with some of the strict regulation. As for the disgruntled former members of Metropolitan National SACO, the Commission of Cooperatives has revealed that the government is exploring all possible ways to recover the lost funds, with some individuals already arraigned in court. We are pursuing the matter in court, but as well we are also liaising with other government agencies to see that we are able to, you know, to do some investigations and to find out anybody who is culpable either in terms of a, a corruption or something related to that, so that also we can take it up. But also, we want to see that we are able to recover the, the money. These, as financial experts, now raise alarm over the trend. We need to ask ourselves, are circles focused? Are they focused on the future? Is there any growth? Do they have any business plan? Do they have a vision? Is there a place they want to go? <laughs> With figures indicating SACOs play a vital role to a majority of Kenyans seeking financial needs, its prominence is slowly dwindling due to an increase of alleged mismanagement and misappropriation of hard-earned contributions of its members. The situation being as is, the government defending its move were in a raft of proposed amendments to the current legislation and a new cooperative bill that is said to be a stringent measure in a move to safeguard SACO operations. Mwege William. TV 47.